Switch. Switching cross. So this you might have seen already in Aditya teaches in in many of his courses. This is the new part. Okay. So time is discrete. Time slot T input is essentially a function F T R F T. What does FT satisfy? We will assume that FT is X. And in fact, strongly complex. Sorry? You can do this with just convexity, but much simpler if you assume strong complexity. And let's say XT star is the R minimum. And without loss of generality, you are going to assume that ft of xt star is in fact equal to 0. If it's not, you can argue that for whatever I'm going to do, it is sufficient to look like this. I'm not going to go into that. It's, it's sufficient that at the optimal, the function takes value 0. This so far so good. The starting step. Some point zero becomes to R. Oh, so this is our problem starts at t equal to a on which time we will see f of one. What do I want to do? I want to so cost of an algorithm at time t. Yes. How far you are going to be? So this is my choice, I'm going to make about x at time t minus ft of ht star. I've taken the zero and just writing it in long form. So this model is. Let's some function c of xt and xt minus 1. <coughs> That's my cost at time t. So this is the suboptimality cost. I'm choosing a variable x of t, which also belongs to Rn. This will tell me how far I am from the optimum. This is telling me how much I have moved since the previous step. So this is the switching cost. This is what is called as the hitting cost. You can also think of it as a suboptimality cost. Are all the terms that function is satisfying at speeding is yes, that's for each f it's not the same function. Every time any function yeah. function. But every function we're going to assume that at its optimal, xt stars could keep changing, but at its optimal, it will. Okay. So, this is what is called as a suboptimality cost, this is what is called as a movement cost. So, overall cost for an algorithm is summation, it will go from let's say even play this game for. And our usual computative ratio will be max of FTs. This is the input. T goes down. That's what we want to control. Anyone have seen this kind of formulation? It's actually as wide application. I'll just say something about it in uh, one little example, but there are many wide applications for this. So this server provisioning in large cloud-based systems, what XT is essentially is the number of servers active at any point of time. And they don't want the number of servers to change very large from one time slot to the other time slot. Now, time slot need not be one unit of time. It could be large periods of time. <laughs> but what they don't want to do is to change the number of servers under operation with the large uh, variation. And 
FT is going to, this is going to be some quality of service. Constant. So, if the number of the demand rises, you would like the servers to also increase, but you don't want to increase too large. So, you want to keep this smooth in some sense. You would want to have wide variations in the number of servers under operation. So, even at the cost of being suboptimal, you don't want to change a lot. These functions that we are known to the algorithm before not the time. Yes, that's one. There is also another formulation where FT also hidden. So you make actions without knowing what FT is going to be. But here I'm making a simple case where at time T, you know FT, you can make your decision depending on FT and where you were previously. So that is but, uh, you know FT at future times also. No, just for time slot T. That's the uncertainty. If I knew everything in the future, then I could solve the offline problem. But there is another formulation where even at time slot t, I don't reveal you FT. And you make your decisions only based on the history. Yes, both, both directions. It's just the movement cost. So the particular form I'm going to take is very simple. Just for keeping this elegant is simply XT minus. For. There's nothing sacrosanct about it. You can choose any convex function and you can still do the analysis. But results might not be as nice as we'll get to them. But analysis is good. As long as it is convex. So probably. Oh, so now propose an algorithm. It's not a difficult problem where you can at least propose good algorithms. Analyzing them might remain high. Is the information structure clear? Eh? This I can actually compute at each time t, I can compute this value. And I know this, I know where I am currently, which is xt minus 1. I just have to choose a new xt. So let me write it even more detail. So decision at time t is just x of t. Knowing xt star xt minus one and then the previous history if you want all the way to x one x zero then you fixed. If you want, you can even put xt minus one star. It won't be necessary. No harm. All this information is available to you. All you need to do is to output a new xt. In what? what? Yeah, very much. How do I know the total cost function? Because I don't know in future what FT is coming. Two time T. Yes, that's one possibility. But given all the suboptimal decisions you've made so far. Will get a very large hit in this. I could always choose xt equal to xt minus one. Valid algorithm. Nothing wrong with that. But that might be far away from the optimal of time t. So there are two costs. So somehow you have to balance them. You cannot just look at one of them and be happy with it. Okay, that's another choice. So equal also. I could always choose an xt such that. This cost is equal to this cost. That's another point. Oh, right. Each time I go, uh, I get an FT. Sorry? At each time T, I get an FT. Yes. So I can calculate the gradient at XT minus 1. Correct. I know the feature direction. Uh, yeah. There is no feature. Mm -hmm. Then the question is essentially boils down to how much do I go down it? If I want to go down in that direction, yeah. if, I, if, I, uh, if, I, if I deviate, if I go too much in that direction, then I will in the second boss. Mm -hmm. But I will make the first term uh, somewhat of the mm -hmm. reduce the first one. No, but what you're saying will essentially work when FT is not revealed to you. 
Here I'm revealing FT to you. So you can, you can actually compute XT star. So there's no requirement to compute any gradients. So it seems like that if you're going to stop now. I mean, if it was the first time you're going to stop, you could find the other thing, right? Because you can get F1, X1 minus F1, X1 star. But you still, of X1, you still have to pay that. Huh? You're starting from C also is known, right? C is known. This is just this function. So that just you can solve the optimization for the up till that time. It's just you cannot solve it for the future, right? right? You can, no, no, because because you move from X0 to X1, you're going to pay a penalty going from I X1. I know, but so I'm going to write. So this says a time one. I will write F1, X1 right. minus F1, X, uh, X1 star, which I know already. So right. that's not a plus C1. X1, X0. This now is just a function of single variable X1, right? I can find the minima and, and say that this is my optimal X1, right? Of course, what is not optimal that I don't know the future, right? That's the only thing bad about it, right? So I can always do it every time. Now, whatever X1 I chose, I don't know it's not going to be optimal, but I know what X1 I chose. No, right? so it's my, a my, valid algorithm. So next, yeah, again, I'll choose X2, it's the only function of X2 because I've already made my decision in the problem. So what he suggested was the same algorithm. That knowing your sub prior suboptimal decisions, locally you make the Optimal That's what you're about. Yeah, I mean, because you don't know any, anything about the features. I'm not disputing the fact that this is a kind of valid algorithm. What else could you do? This is one of the choices. Other choice was what you suggested. Make a trade-off between the two costs. There's always a candidate which makes sure that the cost I pay in terms of suboptimality is equal to the movement cost. That's another algorithm. So you can just do it for time p, you don't know, need disregard in that. Instead of, I mean, you can just look at ftxt minus ftxt star plus cx, ftxt minus one. Yes. Minimize that signal variable xt. So that is an algorithm. No, this is a little bit different, right? Oh, it's one, 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 one will minimize the sum all the way till. No, the the same class of algorithm. Is there any other algorithm? Stay close to like the mean or the median of uh, the previous uh, axis so that uh, so if you have some smoothness information about FT, it's yeah. possible in case, case there is smoothness, then it will happen. That should work, but we don't have. The adversary can actually choose FTs knowing your decisions and in a very arbitrary way. But still, it's a candidate algorithm. Nobody can stop you from increment. So the algorithm we are going to look at. We'll actually do a trade off between these two costs. But each time we'll pick a value of XT so that the suboptimality cost is equal to some beta times the movement cost. We'll try to show that that is pre competitive. That's the goal. None of your other tools are bad. I just don't know how to handle them. Because all of those algorithms are essentially trying to think about in terms of dynamic program functions. Okay, but God comes to Here we will do an algorithm which is called online balance descent. Without any gradient or no use of gradient because I actually know XT stars. So I don't need to use any tool. Oh, so some definition. It's very standard. The level size for a power thing. FT. It's never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most of you must have seen this knowledge. So all point for which FTX remains below, and FT is strongly convex, so this is nice, a nice convex set. Should I need to define what definition of a strong convex set is? Just for completeness. So for is strongly convex. There are many alternate definitions. Yes. 
So many automated techniques. This is the This level set is clear. What it means? I was also assuming that FT of XT star is zero. Drawing balls around it and all that area is essentially part of my level set. Projection defined P as my projection operator on WTL. X so you have this point X, you have this set L to the L. The projection is nothing but the nearest point. So this one P here. You have a starting state like zero. Choose a parameter. Good. So whenever a new function arises, each time t on t do the following. Compute your xt star. Initialize the level which is equal to FT of XT star by my choice, which is actually zero. I'm assuming that everybody, all functions are here at their minimum. Initialize level L equal to zero. That's what I'm beginning. Draw my XT star, and at that point, FT of XT star. X of L is going to be projection of XT of XT. You will understand what it means. Taking the current point where I am, and then projection of this level set with level L equal to zero, which is a single term. Think about it. This level set is nothing but a single term. Because FT of XP star is zero, so L is zero. And for L equal to zero, this is nothing but a single term because of my strong complexity. So what am I saying? Take you choose this new point to be just the single term example. So prediction of XT minus one on the single term is that single term example. No, 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 XT minus one is the previous step what I have done. Is that the optimal? I don't know. That's my algorithm I'm following around it. So algorithm is fitting out these x1, x2, x3. I'm looking at x4. So x4 to find x4, I'm only looking at x3. I'm taking the projection of x3 on this level set. I'll draw a picture for you. I'm here, xt minus 1. This is my current state. This is my single term. The predict the level set here, and I'm taking this projection on the signal. So essentially, xt minus one goes to xt star, but I'll not accept unless something happens. So accept this and stop. If the moment cost of half, so this is one half just for some sector analysis. The moment cost. X of L minus XT minus one. It's less than equal to beta times L. So it is zero essentially. So if the previous step was actually the same place where I want to go, I'm not going to accept this. Otherwise, keep increasing the level. Do this continuously or whatever stops until half XL 
minus x two minus. So it's kind of equal to So first step, what happened was x t minus one was projected onto x t star. I will accept it only if the distance between the two is zero. Otherwise, I'm not going to accept. So given that I'm not accepting, what am I doing now? I'm drawing these balls around this, such that this level is, this is not distance. Be careful, this is level. Contains all the points for which f t x is less than equal to n. These are all the points which I'm drawing as a ball. So I'm taking the projection onto this until I keep increasing this L until the distance between the projection, which is going towards it in some sense, as L increases, the projection is going towards it. This distance, the half of this, is at most beta times the value currently I am at up to level L. And because FTX is at most L, the suboptimality cost is at most L by definition. Suboptimality cost is simply. Ft xt minus Ft of xt star. And because this was 0, at level n, any point I am choosing has at most suboptimality cost of n. What is this is doing is it's matching the hitting uh, the movement cost with the hitting. Hitting cost is simply L, movement cost is this amount with a function beta. So it will accept as long as for any possible choice of beta, I'll accept this. And as soon as this happens, stop and xt equal to Excellent. That's my algorithms output for time t. This is one way of writing this out. What really is happening is I am sitting at xt minus 1. I am willing to move to point xt such that the movement cost is some beta function of my suboptimality cost. So I will choose carefully the beta from which I can prove my character. You can do this continuously how you want to do this because of the strong convexity. This is all nice enough. You can solve this problem efficiently. L, sorry. L is the hitting cost. So, what am I doing? I'm saying level set is. Level set is all points for which. Ftx is less than or equal to. So for any point inside this ball, Ftx is at most n, and Ftx star, Ft star is zero. So the suboptimality cost is nothing but the difference of the two values. This is at most l, that is zero. So the difference is at most. Direct it out. Just look at this. This is zero. And this value is at most l for any point which is within the ball. This whole thing is at most. So the sum of the multiple cost I am bounding by L, and this I am making a function of that L. And because of the convexity, the projection is exactly going to be on the boundary, so it is equal to L, not even less than L. Any questions on the algorithm? The device is very simple. When you have a linear combination of two costs, try to find a solution for which the two costs are somehow balanced. And that's why the name comes on online balance descent. While you're descending towards the optimum, keep the two costs balanced. And the parameter which means the balance is beta. Can you use other pen? Other pen? What is the projection? It will be on the boundary. Is that clear? What is the projection operator? This R minus x minus y whole square, where y belongs to this ball. Can it be that the optimizer is strictly inside? It cannot be right because there is some other point which is before this point. The very loose language, but because of the corners. If the set was like this. Then I can't say what to do. 2D things do easy, but higher dimension things will be problem. So all the nice convexity and strong convexities all make my job easier. And because this is happening at the boundary, everything costs me in fact equal. Because the set is defined to be this is the boundary is in fact all points for which 
Let the x is equal to that's the bond. Any other questions on the algorithm? All right, so let's see. Here. Define some number. So H of T is the hitting cost. U is F T X T minus F T X T star. Because this zero, we're going to write this as F T X T. Assuming this is positive. Always assume that all functions are greater than equal to. And movement cost is empty. It's R X T minus. And still for the OPT, that is the HTO and MTO. OPT also pays off. Some of them could be zero, but OPT also also pays off. So at time t, my hitting cost is HT, movement cost is MT, saving it for time. Theorem. Good choice of beta is equal to 2 plus n by m, where m is the strong convexity parameters of these strongly convex functions. So I need to turn it. That's what the information is needed. <laughs> New online balance is n, where most these guys. That's the result. It's only three. No objections to this way. I'm using the information about the strongly convex parameter. To so, begin with potential function P of x bar of the beta times x minus. You should think of x as the location for. This is a well defined function over a couple. How we will use it is x will essentially take my choice for the algorithm at time t and y will take the optimal choice at time t. That's what we will say. So you can see why should this be reasonable? What am I trying to do? I'm trying to look at the difference between the choices made by my algorithm and the OPT. So I somehow have to argue that. Suppose I'm away somewhere, I'm not away everywhere. That's what I have to do. So this is the distance between xt and xt opt multiplied with some constant data, which I'm allowed to choose later, depending on what I want. The difference between the choices made by, or the square distance between the choice made by my algorithm and so. So if I'm hoping my algorithm is competitive, somehow this, this should not be too large. So if this was too large, there's no. If they diverge. So intuitively, uh, you can get a result that does not depend on the particular sequence FT because you are trading off and forcing the uh, switching cost to also somehow depend on FT because you are making it less than alpha to beta times L, where L depends on how your FT is changed. Otherwise, uh, it's hard to give a competitive ratio that doesn't depend on the particular. I mean, competitive ratio by definition cannot depend on the particular sequence, but right. even if you can only show this because you're making the how much you're allowing your to move actually depend on FT. So you have, so rather than saying FT, XT star definitely has to come into play. You cannot make a choice without knowing what XT star is. So the algorithm is like least intelligent in some sense. It's not using too much intelligence. So all it's saying is, I have two costs, I need to, I'll just make sure that they have some relationship with each other at every single time span. That's all I'm done. It will do many fancy things. They're actually done. 
when you don't assume strong convexity, you need to do something more. But for strong convexity, this can be just the name where what happens is the next step what I'm going to do see what is my instantaneous cost ht plus m here some different what I'm going to show is that del c of something is at most some constant times let t of t plus m here this is really what I want. So this is the drift of this quantum should be sufficient to relate the cost of my algorithm at each time versus the cost of the OPT attack. And this is for every single time slot and the They have to carefully choose the structure of function. This carefully is a good So keep harboring this. For the problem you write down. There is no recipe which tells you how to choose a potential. So we, yeah, this is slightly more art, art form. Structured way of doing this. Sometimes it's just obvious, but this problem is kind of obvious. Okay. But even once you choose this, why it works, it's still not good. So, in some language, some discipline is called a Latin or something. In CS is called potential. Potential is think of this as a physics term. How large? So you don't want this to be too large. Always think of that. You want the state of your algorithm to keep cooling off often enough in terms of getting close to the OPT order. That is why it's called potential. You don't want it to be too large. Bad states are where the potential is large. But I can't control how large it is. So what I'm going to do is sum over all of these right? so for each time t for all time t i'm going to show this and then i sum it given that this is positive i can translate that guarantee into the problem so to begin with it is positive to end with it is positive and to begin with it is like in fact zero because the starting state for both the algorithms is the same if that was not the case i would not be able to do what i am and the end state is positive so i will be able to it's very important. If you don't start at the same step for OPT and your algorithm, this will not work. But that is comparing apples to apples. At least the start step x0 is the same. At that point onwards, you can diverge. Okay. So some demos using high school geometry. And prove them if there is time. Otherwise, you know, it's too simple. You can use even an AM, I was told AM, AM inequality is sufficient to do this. So we got on Or the angle. If we A minus C, vector minus C, and B minus C. Nice. Five by two. Five. 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 To do with algorithm, just a basic fact in high school job. One more of this kind. So both can be proved using cosine's law or even a and j one point, whatever you prefer. I'll get to the proof of this time, but they're not important. Okay. 
Study to control not just this, I actually want to control the difference in two subsequent time steps. So, this is the first step I'm going to write. Then I'll look at P of xt, comma xt opt minus P of xt minus 1, comma xt minus 1. How is P changing over time is what I really want. This is just the first stepping stone. You can see this is actually directly from the definition. So, replace x by x t and y by x t over simply x t and x t over t will show up. I want to write that in terms of x t minus x t minus 1 and x t over t minus x t over t minus. So, what should I do? Add and, and subtract the only thing you should do. So add and subtract that values and try to do what you want. Subtract, subtract what? I need to use a strong convexity here. Without that, it's not. So I can add and subtract whatever I want, but what should I add and subtract in this? So that I can write this in this form. With HT is different between XT and XT minus 1. Sorry, it is constant. Uh -huh. It is just FT of XT. This is FT of XT star. On the OP, sorry. This is FT of XT OP. This is FT of XT. This is what I want to write. Starting point is the distance between the two. How do I move on distance to function? For that, I need to start on the same. What should I add and subtract to this one? What is common to both of them? Something which is common to XT and XT OPT. Both are the same function. But that is the, from the outside, they are wrapped around with the same function. But what is one common place from which I can measure their distance? XT star, star is something common to them. So actually, add a separate XT star to the left hand side and try to see what I can do. XT of XT bar. To add and subtract to start in this. This add and subtract in XT start. So, what should I get? It two times in the top. Let's see.
we just push it in. So what can we bound this by? This A times the income is just 2 times A times B. So these are squares and this is our square. So if I apply A and G, what will I get? Just get another term. Each of one for this and one for this. Okay. Right? Square root by mean, whatever one state of the right one. That's all. Right. So two will cancel out. Again, one and for this and one for this. So this will be two times theta. That's T. Okay. Now, how do I go from this to T? The one. This is somehow related to HD. Use strong community. So, this is alternate way of looking at strong community. Yes. ST is equal to N by T. Where ST of ST. So now can I use that here? This is at most two times FTX by M, which is nothing but HT itself. Because FT of XT star is it. So keep saying this again and again, but hitting cost is nothing but the function evaluated at the choice chosen by the algorithm. So this is at most four times theta over M HT plus HT. Is everybody okay? Yes. We did this is also equivalent to FTX minus FTX is star. Because this is zero, I mean this one is literally equal to M by 2 X minus X T is equal to distances are one pick complex using strong numbers. This might this is I think the only place where you need strong colors in the proof. So we are essentially the ones. But the distance between XT and XT OPG can be bounded only in terms of the suboptimality. So, Sir, I didn't get that. Um, which one? Why is it equivalent to? No, it was a gradient, right? The gradient multiplied by that. So, you replace that by. They're not the same thing. thing. It's another equivalent. Another equal. Not the same thing. Now let's come to the difficult condition. I want to show this for all time. We we'll divide this to for all time t. We want to show the appropriate con. Let's first look at time plus t such that h t is at most h t will be. The valid case, one of them. For other slots, it will happen. For each time slot t, either ht is less than or equal to ht or bt or greater than ht. I'll first look at the simpler case. Here, I will not need any intelligence. It is just go through. All the intelligence is needed on the hitting cost of the algorithm is actually more than the hitting cost of OPT, for which all the properties of my algorithm will be exploited. Here, we'll get this for free, whatever. So, think about you are already better than. OPT is the rating cost is actually lower than OPT rating cost. So you should not worry too much. That's all. There's P of T. P of T. I'm just defining the difference as going backwards. T minus T minus T. C of T. Minus T. Give me a trivial bound on this and then use that lemma to claim what, you, what I want to claim. So, you didn't get what you, why you wrote that? Um, which one? Dividing HT less than HTOPT. Which is one of the two cases. Okay, and you're going to consider the second case over. That's the more difficult case. This is the easy case. 
where we are actually better than OPT at this point of time. Let's see, let them make it. Can I say this is the most P of HTOP? Just dropping a minute. Trivial. And using the lemma, I also know what this value is. This is at most 4 liter time. So now, I'll try to write HT plus MT plus then phi T. HT, I know HT is like this. MT is how much? Which inequality? This one. It's dropping the negative. This is by definition this. It is dropping the negative. So this is reality. Using the lemma for this. So lemma three. Lemma three. So how can I bound this? This is what I want really want to know. So I've got this in terms of HT. The only term which is somewhat mysterious is NT. What can I write NT as? What my algorithm? What is the relationship between NT and HT? Always. There's some something special happens here. Which one is which one? NT is at most beta times NT. What is the moment cost? This is the moment cost is equal to beta times L, where L is nothing but the heading cost. This is nothing but H D plus beta H D plus these extra terms. Now the fact that H D is less than or equal to H T O P T, you can also use that here. I get that one plus beta plus four example. So actually bounded my running cost at time t plus the drift at some constant times drifting cost of the OPT at time. That is really what I wanted. For each time t, I wanted this to be some function of OPT's hitting cost plus OPT's moving cost. I don't even better. I have not even bothered about writing in t. I've just done this key OPT with the cost. So sorry, this is another four of beta, right? Very good. What have you done so far? Nothing much. For the simpler case, when the heating cost was smaller than the heating cost for the OPT, we are able to write this running condition only as a function of HTO. And we have really not done anything. We only exploited one fact that functions are strongly convex and algorithm maintains some relationship between HT and MT. Now comes the hard part where we actually have to use some non trivial facts to HT greater than HT. So let's take a break. So, take minutes time. This will be slightly launch. Let's take a break. So, one announcement. So maybe we'll, after this, we'll go outside and get a picture taken. Right? We're on the first screen. The yeah. Maybe a token of appreciation from CNI to the speaker. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, last time somebody gave me a gift. I am not in the habit of taking in my luggage. And then they stopped you at this? And the airport. I don't know what to do with that box. It was a damn box. I didn't care to open it. And the security that told me. This kid under kya hai? I had no idea. You know, koi te hai. It was some game set. It had all sorts of metal parts. It said nothing will go. I literally had done. Because I didn't want to go back and check. Is this flying safe? Yes. Is this flying safe? That's all I wanted to check.
difficult, but whatever you want to do next is more difficult than what we have said. Is the problem clear? Algorithm clear? Approach clear? Everything is fine. This might be a good time to revisit rather than just finish. Oh, let's put it. What is XT and XT This is your XT star. This is your XT and somewhere it is XT. What is your XT? XT of XT and XT of it is FT of XT of it. Given that XT is greater than XT of it, what can I say geometrically about XT, XT star and XT of it? Given that HT is greater than HT OPT, what can I say about the relative positions of XT, XT star, and XT OPT? XT Yes. Then XT. Okay. Sorry? Format triangle and XT. Okay. Yes. Let's call this XT. See if you want. What do you want to say? See, at XT star, FT, XT star is 0. That much we know. And HT OPT is less than HT. That's also we know. What can I say about XT's, XT star and XT OPT? That's all you get. Sorry? A is greater than C. Why is that? What is A? That's not the HD. And motion control is all annoying this much. So it cannot go in both directions, right? It is one type, one side inequality. We should not be able to use it twice. Take it what I want. So what is this circle I have drawn? I have drawn this circle. What is the special about this circle? At this time t, so data, this is the level. Okay. I may say LF was the final level at which my algorithm stopped at time t. This is that bond. Now can you say something where xt lies, where xt will be lies, where xt star lies? See, when I stop, Why is it necessary that XT won't come in? We can say that XT lies. Yes, so tell me that. OPT is better. Yes, so where is XT lying? is equal to beta times. No, outside or inside? Outside. What about XT and OPT? What did we do? This is my algorithm. Okay, so tell me whatever. I will accept whatever you say. I'm not claiming, I'm just trying to engage people to understand are people following what you call. Should XT be on the boundary? Should be outside? Is there any relationship with XT or beauty? What all can happen? XT is not the boundary, XT or beauty should be inside the boundary. What are you saying? XT minus 1 is outside? Why? See, the circle radius is FT, XT. And at this point, this L is exactly equal, equal to LF. Yeah. And L is equal to FT, XT. FT, XT is equal to LF. That means it. Yeah. And XT OPT thing is strictly lower. So it better be inside. HT being larger than HT OPT. Right. This is the value of HT. XT of HT. This is my HT. Now, this is a convex set. So, <laughs> any point with a smaller value of HT better lie inside. By definition, HT OPT is smaller than HT. 
তোমার এক্সপি ওপেন দিয়ে সামনে দিব I don't know if it's center or not. That's why I'm just this function defines it. It need not be nice. No symmetry is given. So this is for visualization only. XT inside definitely and XT open is also inside. What I know is XT minus one on outside and XT is on the boundary. What this principle you've seen so many times. What is the angle made by this? That's all. That's all I'm going to use. For rest of the analysis, because if you remember, all these lemma that I written are only for obvious. This lemma one is exactly for obvious. This simple property of projection is what we do. So now you should think about it. Why is that I'm able to bound? I will be able to bound with the missing chip. But then each step, what is it doing? I was outside somewhere. New point is XT star. If XT OPT happens to be close to XT star, what am I doing? I'm projecting it down. Which is, so I'm getting actually closer to XT star. And this angle, if XT OPT happens to be inside, is obvious. If XT OPT happens to be outside, which is the case I handled here, and then we get the units of it. So this is a special property, is this projection over the But every time, whenever XT is OPT is smaller than XT, I'll get this property. Because of the projection. Is this clear why this angle is okay? For any point inside, the angle made by this vector, which is a projection vector, is only that. This method is faced in a PhD interview. I don't know if you guys ask him. We ask about it. If you're projecting things on a convex X, what is the angle made by the inside line, the outside line? It's called the principle of orthogonal. How do you solve? Ax minus b for this point. It's essentially different. Is everybody clear that this property is true as long as hp is different than hp is different? And given this, I'm going to use lemma 1 and lemma 2. Yeah, that's all I know. The simple application of lemma 1 and lemma 2 what will give us the answer. Question? Everyone should be clear that hp opt being less than hp implies this. For my algorithm, because I'm doing simple projection and projection has this problem. And again, convexity of this set also is important. If this is not convex, this is not true. For convex set, if you're projected from outside, the projected point projected, this vector, etc. Always make it. So now you're just going to do something. Now I'm first time really writing the difference of it. Here I got away by just dropping this term. Now I'm actually going to use this term and see what, how the difference changes. So we we'll to add and subtract the term. Minus P of XT minus 1 and XT so different time indices here for the algorithm T minus 1 because this is the relationship I have between what is happening between XT minus 1 and vector XT and XT and XT O2. So I'm going to change my time indices from for my algorithm T minus 1 and for the OPT in XT. That is one step. How am I going closer to the OPT? The bottom line is I want. If I am away, to go closer to the OPT in one step. OPT might go later, further away, and try to catch up again. That's what one part and the government is trying to do. And uh, we use equality one. Sorry? No, you say, why did you write equality? Then you're going to write more terms. Right? I think more terms. 
plus This is parallel. So now look at lemma one and lemma two and tell me which ones I can apply which lemma on. So I want to apply both of them on two differences. See for the first lemma, of course, angle of requirement. So it should already tell you that this should be applicable to the first term. The first term meaning. The, diff, the first two terms difference is this. Because I have some relationship between xt, xt minus 1, and xt obt. This vector, which is xt obt minus xt, is making an output channel with xt and xt minus 1. Those are exactly the quantities in our industry. Look at what that was a minus c and b minus c. The indices are ac and ab. You can check that exactly those indices are appearing over there. For which? Yes, they are distinct time indices. XT and XQ. What am I doing here? Right, why is it this? Right. It should really be next to this. Must be a type. So that's the one I can compare. So I can use this to write this is at most. And this is from lemma number two. There is no condition required for any vector system. Yes. The only thing which is changing here is the second component, C and B. A remains the same, which is xt minus 1 and xt minus 1 for application of that lemma. Yeah. Let's fix that later. Let's just stick this. But then it won't have found of each other. Which it's one? No, we're saying go further and try to understand. You're not saying directly apply this, you're saying using this. Apply on that and also show that that is also true. So that is minus b xt xt minus one. This is the most important one. It's a negative sign. The trip is actually bigger. That I'm getting closer. Why? How much amount? This much amount. And this term gives us two times. These are positive. Xt. I do need OPT. I'll fix this later. It's not the right. Missing some term. So let this be XT. Yes. Yes. The application of lemma is fine. How do I from here to here? I need maybe another step. But take this for the moment. This is the right. So if I just have data next to the two signal will directly give you, but I actually need. Excuse me. I might have been missing some screen. But okay, okay, how we got from here? So without the OPT is clear. I'm just applying them all. Let's take for the moment with OPT also. If I get this as a negative term is the most important thing. How am I decreasing drift at each time by this much amount? This you should think of OPT's contribution. So you are trying to go to the close to OPT and OPT is moving or doing something else in the next step. That's what is happening. The third, second is the third. So I think another way to think about it is you're anyway always running an algorithm which is trying to minimize certain costs. When you write a potential function, the drift is negative 
from the contribution of the algorithm. And it's positive because the contribution from the whole. So all the post two terms which are balanced. What happens here is this is your running cost of the algorithm. You get a negative term corresponding to what work you are doing for the algorithm and a positive term, which is the term corresponding to the OPT's operation. And that plus is what exactly shows up over here. And that negative takes care of handling this. So your work gives you negative drift, OPT's work gives you positive drift, add that together and get some form of this. That's all. This is ballpark. Here we are making a special like specialized case for this particular. In the middle term, yes, uh, P of X T O P T X T minus one O P T right? This one? Uh, that should be X T O P T. Yes. Oh, Right. Here. From here. Put that. What is P? P or XT, XT minus 1. From here, times the movement cost is by definition. Two times. Half there. Second. Two times. Similarly for open. So if I use this, okay, help me of A to tell them. Minus two theta and k plus four theta and t will be plus one term which will end up this is p of x two minus one x two minus one. This is interesting. What have I done? I've taken the drift. In terms of my movement cost, it's a negative term. In terms of OPT's movement cost, it's positive. And plus the same term from the last previous time. This phi of xt minus 1 and xt minus xt opt minus. What am I able to connect? That at time t, the drift has some connection to what difference or the potential function was in the previous step. It decreases by this amount and it increases by so this is the work done by opt, this is the work done by you, and this is where you were before. Can okay, we bound that last term somehow using HTs and MTs or whatever? If you did that, then was my lemma number three. For each time t, I bounded the potential function at a particular time. I can use that. Because that did not require any condition on whether HT was large or HT was small. If I apply lemma 3, which did not see any condition on HP and HP OPT, what do I get? I get minus 2 theta. Plus 1 theta. Minus 2 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 theta. Minus Look at the running condition now. HT plus MT plus then field. This is at most. But now we going to make a choice of beta. Beta is a parameter I control. I can choose whatever I want. I'm going to use beta to be 1 plus 1 over beta. This book essentially this will be large enough. This negative term I want large enough to cancel out these two positive terms. This I will accept as the penalty coming from the root. And that's the upper bound. 
with this free array, I can choose whatever I want. So this is my definition of the potential function. And larger eta give me larger negative term. I will also, of course pay a penalty at larger eta here, but I can't uh, avoid that. This idea here that why I can choose eta. Ideally, I would like to choose a smaller eta, but that will not give me enough negative value. So I will have to choose this enough such that I can cancel off these two terms, which are coming from the cost of the algorithm. And, but accept the penalty coming from the origins. Those are the larger ones. So one plus one by beta. Remember, this is nothing but one by beta. I know choice of the algorithm. So I'm just writing as one plus one by beta H T plus minus two beta. H T is as it's so by my choice of theta, this cancels out. This is just zero. Left with NTOPT, HT minus one OPT, which are good terms. I don't mind because anyway, I want to bound in terms of. HTOPT then NTOPT. This is the complicated time. I got the additional HT minus 1, which is the cost of the algorithm. The heating cost of the algorithm is times T minus 1. How to get rid of this? That's the only thing I have to get. You can see the difficulty. Every other term is what I actually want. I want upper bound only in terms of HTOPT then NTOPT. And this is almost there. This is empty OPT, this is HT minus 1 OPT, but then this is this real term, which is HT minus 1. How do I get rid of that? Sorry? HT minus 1 by this one. There was no before that because there was just four eta. No? This one? Mm -hmm. No, no, this four eta is as it is. No, no, then the next step you could divide by M. I didn't get it. This one, right? No, no, go down. Here, yes, this one. Next. This so one. No, where do you get that? Okay, okay this is the right. So all I need to do is to just get rid of the next minus one somehow. That's algebraic. There's no more tricks are needed. Or you need to just spot something. Like how do I take care of it? Right. Right. Well, no, it's so the there. We don't know. We are looking at time t. It could be either way x t minus 1. Mm -hmm. I can't control. That would be like circular proof. I just put all the problem to time for t minus 1. That's not You will see the difficulty there. Everybody see the difficulty. What where I am stuck right? I got this irritating term, which is a function of the algorithm itself. I would have been happy if it was two times of here for the OPT, I don't mind. I could have gotten rid of it. As long as I can get rid of this with an additional factor, I don't mind. But I have to get rid of that. Until then I'm not done. Because I want this equation to be satisfied. H T minus one is connected to M T minus. Correct. Yes. What is the cost of algorithm at time t? The cost addition of the two. <laughs> and there also have some relationship. Can we use that? So H T and M T are related to each other. And H T plus M T is actually the cost of the algorithm at time t. Plus one by theta is the plus. So you more or less there. We would see why, how should I be able to do this? That HT and MT are connected. And HT plus MT is the cost of the algorithm. 
What do I want to do? On the left hand side, anyway, I'm going to sum it over all time slots and claim that that is the cost of the algorithm. I'm going to get another term on the right hand side, which is also cost of the algorithm. As long as it is smaller than this, I should be able to do this. So I need to ensure that the multiplying factor here is at most one. So then I can bring it this side and divide it. I'll do this more carefully. If you're not following, and as long as you understand the problem, that's sufficient. Then I have this one nagging term on the right hand side, which I need to take care of. But my algorithm has some nice properties that HTs and FTs are related to each other. And on top, the cost is nothing but HT plus MT. So if you sum it over all time slots, C. So even under the stereoscopic sum and many of the same eight similar. First I'll do the stereoscopic sum, and then the next So this property I will not show directly for each time slot. I'll make sure that del phi is always positive. This is true by the definition. And del phi at time zero, or phi at time zero is zero. Because both of both the algorithm and the OPT stand in the same state. And in the terminating state, wherever they are, here's my definition of this problem. Zero is important to begin with because this will come to minus sign. That zero is important. There it's it's not sufficient that it's greater than zero. Let me finish whatever I said. But on the right hand side, you want HT OPT plus MT OPT. Correct. But here you have HT minus 1 OPT. Yeah, you somehow want to bring it back to the left hand side. That's all I want. Huh. What I meant is the last term, HT <coughs> minus 1 OPT. So that would HT OPT. That's all. Okay. We'll add it anyway over all time slots. So the addition doesn't really matter if it's T or T minus 1. You possibly are missing one term, it's not. not okay. What is equal these two are identical. The starting states for OPT as well as algorithm in the same. This is zero and this is positive. This is the point, but that's important that this is zero. If this was if you get this is also greater than or equal to zero. I do not get this in positive. I get this in equality only because at the start this is zero. Now we're going to sum that. So, cost of the algorithm I'm using to say this as one plus. So let me write eight here and tell you why we need to increase it a little bit. That's T O P. Shooting that in the ball. <coughs> Do you want to make a mistake? HT minus some OPT and HT OPT. Yeah, those sums can be written in the ball. 
process counting from zero, eventually one term less, you can only go one term. If this is the term, we'll try it into still is a function of that. Now, can you write it as a function of COBD? That's all I'm going to do. This whole thing, I want to write it as a function of COBD, the total cost of the algorithm. Somebody tell me what that is. The HD is related to MT, and MT plus HD is equal to the cost of the algorithm at time t. Sum it over all time t. Can you write this as a function of COBD? One divided into plus beta. <laughs> Four eight and Keeping these terms and everything. Right. Just to make sure clear what I'm That's what I'm going to use. Yeah, but I'm still studying how to get this one plus the plus eta, eta, eta by n h t of the yeah. We do set the name on those. That's only four eta by m h t you know, h t minus one of it here. So this one extra one plus beta that's coming from. Okay. What's here? Ah, so, A is coming from the earlier case where ST was less than equal to ST. I'm taking the sum of the two. So, either for any time plus T, either ST is greater than ST of T or ST is less than ST of T. So, I take the sum of the two. Okay, so, you take the uh, well, addition one, of one plus beta plus 4 8, 8 eta by M will, of course, beat 4 8, 4 eta by M. Yes, okay. So, I'm just taking the larger of the two. Okay. Thanks. Good. Is this clear to everybody? Well, because of the algorithms. Relationship between H and MP, this relationship works. And what is the right hand side? If I sum it over all time T, it's nothing but the cost of OBD with this extra term. So summation H T comes one plus one by beta C O B D. So sum it over all time T by definition with the cost of the other. This is summation of H T over all time T. That is all I know. So, we're able to write COBD is less than equal to cost of the OBT plus some number which is smaller than 1. Beta I'm allowed to choose. So, I can also the beta such that this whole thing is smaller than 1. Otherwise, this is useless. So, beta I choose already. Now, knowing the value of beta, I can choose a beta. And beta will choose because to begin with the arrow sequence. Right. 2 plus 10 over n. Yes, so 2 plus 10 over n is what I want. So, after all, you choose this, you push it over there, you get from the same ratio. You are able to write C O B D equal to this, right? And so on. That's what you're doing with it. And now you're allowed to choose. So, eta, remember, requires eta to be greater than something. That is why I'm Eta is at least as much as this. Knowing eta, I can choose a beta. A particular choice I can make is that much. Three. And this is the by definition of the cost. So the cost of the algorithm is at most three plus one by n. So this is all algebra. The basic takeaway from reading all of this is the construction of a potential function depending on the algorithm 
and algorithm definition depending on the thing. Who comes first is never clear. You first think of an algorithm, then think of a potential function, or you first think of a potential function, then think of an algorithm. This process could be completely reversed for your plan. Then intimately connected. Say potential function will not work for different algorithms. Clearly depends on what the algorithm is trying to do and what drift condition you are. Sometimes the drift condition will tell you which algorithm will give you sufficient drift. Many times I work to give this, I first think of a potential function which gives me sufficient drift. And now I think about which algorithm will actually work for that particular. Rather than thinking algorithms first and then <laughs> drift is necessary. Algorithm choices are plenty. We first see what drift you need for you to work. Then think which algorithm will actually allow you to do that. That's one way of doing it. This setting, I don't know what they did. It's not my worry. But real takeaway is the algorithm is very simple. It just tries to balance the few costs. And once you do that, the idea of the potential function is to make sure that you are getting so the picture I raised. Lifting it down to x, and if suppose x completely happens to be here, you get this interesting relationship. Mm -hmm. The projection, right? The angle you are making in these two particular vectors is obvious. Then you can use some geometric law. Okay, so in the remaining time, either I can prove those two by one, or I can take questions or any of the five days. Cheers. Sure, yes. Or any other questions. Just to remember that this little too trivial. It can stand in fluent and get it. So can you do this without the strong convexity? You can. Yeah. But results are slightly uh, weaker as well as the algorithm for down. So there is something called mirror design that works. There is also one I didn't train. So if you want to look more, you can uh, check out Adam Beerman's page at Caltech. Here's the like series of works. I don't wear them. Okay. So think of any problem. An algorithm, what are we trying to do? It's locally or in some intelligent way trying to minimize the cost. Every algorithm, your the problem is minimizing some function. Any algorithm without knowing the future is Given all the information you have, try to push it, push the cost down. OPT is doing something else. OPT is not working against you. Because he knows something else, he is making different decisions. So what you want to do is, you want to compare your intelligence versus potentially incredible intelligence of the OPT. By making local decisions, can you somehow say that OPT cannot be too far away from me? It may not match with me. I should be able to keep track of its progress. That's really what it is. I cannot say any more different words what this means. So in this particular example, what it meant was, we just substituted this as xt and xt opt. So what is this tracking? The distance between the choices made by your algorithm and, and this particular form. This is not necessarily the right thing. It is one such function. You could put a Whatever function is there. The functions become more and more weird for very simple problem solvers. But here it was a very nice quadratic one. What is it trying to do? It's just trying to measure the distance between the two possible choices. What are we by showing all this? What are we showing? Just think of it. What are we showing? That this is not an unbounded function of some sort. That even though we don't know what OPT is doing. The, the, the drift term somehow, which is how it is decreasing. See, you would like this to decrease. You, you would ideally like this to go to zero overall. If it was zero, then you are okay. But that may not happen. What you want to do is that if it increases, it cannot be just keeps increasing all the time. There is sufficient decrease decrements also to this process is what you want to do. And so let's say this is the trajectory of the OPT, your trajectory is somewhere. You'll be able to make these downward pushes to this potential function in the hope that your trajectory and the OPT's trajectory remain somewhere somewhat close. That's really what is there now. 
you can never match OPT, but try to do or try to catch up to the OPT. Nothing of this is precise. Very good. 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 Very so somehow you are able to track OPT. This is the thing over there. OPT might make different decisions, let's say early on, supposing because it has more information. But what this is telling you that okay, you made bad decisions or different decisions in OPT early on. But eventually you will be coming close to OPT somehow. That's what the presence of such a potential function is. You can't pinpoint it, but because of the drift condition, you should be able to say. There are two, always two terms to the drift. One negative term because of your algorithm, one positive term because of something OPT. Okay. Okay. If you can continue this, you can also manage this. Say this again. Even though I want to do pressure, I'm not going to get the last word. Any lagoon function? Fine. There's no, nothing particular or one particular potential function must have done. For the same problem tomorrow, you might be able to come up with another potential function, which also gives this. There's no uniqueness and more potential. How many there are, you don't know. One count anything. So this is a very weird world of constructing potential functions. So once you get habituated, you can do it much faster than this. Uh, yeah. This is not structured, but still, this is something you will learn over time. How to do this. It's a very powerful tool. You can actually think of any optimization you're doing and just look at these kind of objects and try to solve your problems. You can actually just throw away every other tool you want. So for most problems they exist, they just are finding and unmatching. It's a very bold paper I'm making, but most of the time it turns out good. They just are finding them. Sorry. For this problem, I don't have, but I'll give you another it's super function. So it's the function f uh, and c, but uh, same for all t. Yes. So then you can just follow the OPT, right? Then you will have, because yeah. you know f at the start. You complete information about that. And then you will just follow OPT. You will always have complicated ratio 1. Now, next in between question we should ask suppose they are, they are moving slowly, they will do better. Well, FTs have some nice property when you there for them. So people rather than doing that, what they assume is that you know a window in future for which you know FTs. Mm -hmm. So at time t, you know FT, FT plus one, all the way to FT plus them. I'm getting to bed as a function of this window. If the window size is infinity, you are perfect. As the window size shrinks to one, you are balanced at Somewhere in between. Suppose you only know the next function down, then you do better and you can do it. That's in between. Another DJ mean what I said? They are moving slowly, but you don't know where exactly they're going. So every time you have some uncertainty about the next one, which is bounding, then also you can do But he has written a series of papers. Follow. What's up this letter? Just go to this page. What was the name? Adam Dale, A D A M, and W I E R. Man. Who's the man? Of that. They are making a bold twist. For any problem you look at, there does exist like one which will work. You just have to find it. Is. There is also a Foster's thing. Foster's theorem applies, but how to construct the Lagunar function? Most often you do. Nothing of that can be said here. And also, even if you have a lacuna function, because every function is a lacuna function. Any function you put as long as it is greater than it will do zero. <coughs> it is running potential function. It does the job or not.
even for R2 come up with the R. So in D dimensions, let me call the status on the literature. View of any algorithm that is order square root D. What we know is our particular algorithm is complicated question. When we then do this over RD, that's the same. Yeah. But just try it for D equal to 30 and try to see what you would like to do. This is as natural an object I can think about. The tip should be given in problem. Let's see where should you go? Any, any cases to what is the reasoning of thinking? It's very simple then. I'm sitting at some place, XP, new object comes in, all the other to is to move inside. The penalty is going to be think you there because if you move in the wrong place, the next object will be given in such a way that you have to move a lot again. That's all you have to care. And even a simpler problem is not easy. Suppose all these objects. So OI is within OI find small. That they're nested. Even then this problem is not easy. So just thinking down. O1 is the biggest object, O2 is smaller, it is even smaller and so on. Even for that. Okay, so for example of a very difficult problem. So you do this is another problem. No, I don't have a more difficult potential function for a related problem. I have a potential function for single server. If at speed S of P and time P, power consumption is B of S of P. Simple example, S of power. Simplest example. Is it? I have a server which can work at different speeds. If you ask me more speed, I will ask you more power. That is S to the power 2. Blocks are right. Blocks with size. Block J with size W there. And I let block J depart. So delay for job is nothing but dj minus dj minus the overall delay is j. That's our usual method for delay. At any point of time, we can process at most one job at whatever speed you like. Objective is to minimize delay plus the integral of P of S of <coughs> So put this in the S of T and with job to process. Yeah, that there are two decisions to be made. At any point of time, I have to find what speed to run in my server and which Job to process. Now that we have to minimize some of the delay, just to find the responding delay, plus the total power cost. Effect. This you can see the main cost. Two function trees. And the algorithm which is the best known also has this point. Then it tries to instantaneous cost here. So this delay, if you are not seeing this 
There's also a good delay. It's also an integral of n of t dt, where n of t is the number of outstanding jobs at time t. You have not seen a simple exercise to see that these are rectangular boxes. How you count the delay? Either you count in time or you count as heights. I'm counting it as heights. This is also true. Then Alberta Nagin tries to do choose S of t and that P of S of t is equal to n. The algorithm is also using a beta equal to that's my speed at which job to process the job with the least remaining size. That's the algorithm which is the best number. So among all the outstanding jobs, pick the job which has the least remaining size. And for that, choose the speed which is given by this. So this will be square root n t for this particular. So if you have 10,000 jobs in the outstanding jobs, square root of 10,000 is the speed at which you should work at that. So more jobs, more speed, less job, less speed, but not linearly. It depends on what chapter is. Now we use a potential function which works for this answer. Competitive ratio for the potential function I write down is 2. You cannot do better than 2. Famous better by one second. Complicated business. Let me actually open my To ask for more configuration of this series to come. N of D or not? How much time do you know? Give the algorithm. Similarly, you have N0. <laughs> Define this quantity N of T, comma Q, the number of graphs with the algorithm with size, with the remaining size. Just to understand, m t comma zero is equal to n of t. n of t is the total number of outstanding jobs. m t comma q is all the jobs among the outstanding jobs whose remaining size is at least q. So n t zero is n of t. So when the remaining job is at least size zero, you can even say n t of the smallest remaining size. Let's say q s is also n. Now let's define f of pi minus f of pi minus 1 to be p prime of p inverse of pi. Let p remember it, p of x is x to the power of 2. That's the same So this is defined as a difference. Pi f of i minus f of i minus 1 is p prime of p inverse of i. I'm just defining a function. P prime is just the derivative, first derivative of P. P prime is first derivative, inverse is inverse. So first take the inverse, then take it. That's why. Now the potential function is some cost n times an integral. We go to infinity. F for Zero of T 
Give it up. And put up. Plus here. That is max of zero performance. Is this complicated enough? For everybody? Which paper is this? You know, before buy. For speed scaling with an arbitrary power function. Nikhil Bansal, Bodhini Chan, and Kurt Post. Just send me an email as well. So, if you type the title, speed scaling with an arbitrary power function. This is called a speed scaling problem, where server speeds are variable. So, what you get to choose the speed and which job to process. There are two variables. Typically, it should only have one variable. Which job to process. Here, you the speed and under the control. The more speed you use, the more power you have. All right. Did you connect, connect to a projector for Yes, please, please, please. That's why it shows. Who's be seen? I'm going to So Should be computer written first one. Class video. So what is this you are using the using the uh, S video or composite? It doesn't say much. Yes, at one point. Yes. It completely changed. So, because we are supposed to be either it's video or it's very allows. Yeah, we don't have a cable for that. It has to be as a computer or as a computer. Yeah, it's a thing that's there. It's now there. It's in it. Okay. Okay. But he has some magic character. No, no, no. The character is a problem. 
What is the problem? The uh, previously present video. No, we tried everything. Yeah, we tried. Eh? We tried everything. <laughs> now I have to switch the display. Thank you, sir. Testing my one game. Okay. Oh, we tried it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you have to wait for a minute. Can you not just bring it to this window? Or do we have to check it? It's a lie. Only when he's here, it works. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. That's it. You stay here. No, no, sir. Stay here. You go out and go away. I can see it here. What the display is. You can drag it maybe to yeah. the other window. Okay. Yeah. Good. I think there should be extended or something. Make it duplicate or mirror. I'm there. See here. I think it's showing it there. English. Right. Any Mac warrior is What is that called? 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 What is what is the problem? The resolution we may need to set it manually, I guess. You think it's that machine? Okay, so we just wanted to show one thing that there are already 100 people who signed up for 100? 100. Perfect number. Century. Yeah, so I just want more info for you. The four cents today, I don't need you to submit homework, so only more five should go out. Let me go back, look at whatever time we come to, and please interact with me if there are problems which you could solve or in whatever manner. I would like to engage more than what it has been. So I was hoping for more interaction where people could actually turn in homework and I could tell them what was the right thing, what was not the right thing, or how you could actually go further. But that's all. But at least going forward, next few weeks, if you do this, it's perfectly fine. Now I'm going to shamelessly advertise my book. So this is the book which should come out soon. And this was the special prize I declared on day one. So if you engage even more than what you've already, and eventually I'm convinced, you'll get an author signed book from Ubrilla. All right. That's all I have. That's been packing you. That's some kind of packing stuff. So it's actually, I wanted this I made this graphic. This is uh, a take on Tetris. Tetris is the perfect online game. You only get to see the next time, which is coming. You don't get to see the entire future. We've all been playing online algorithms for a very long time. So what is the uh, metric for Tetris? For Tetris, you have to play it until perfectly the whole thing disappears. You don't want this to build up. You don't know that. Right, but we, the we very often we are able to clean that up, right? Yeah, so Eventually, whenever you want to stop, you want to have the smallest possible. So, if you build it up like this, the input should stop. Really. And at that point, I'll solve the height. If time it increases, but the yeah, so okay. So, so I'll just count the average, 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 average. Please average. count the height. Maximum height over all time you will commit. I will stop the input like this. But the maximum height divided by t will go to zero. I think the average time. Why should I divide by t? Maximum height, not some of the height. Maximum height. At any point of time, the maximum height will be. What is your algorithm? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Should have done in the first class. No, no, no. Under, but I got another. But she bought it.